Hello, this is a short instructional video on how to use the model 6517B electrometer for proper low current and high resistance measurements. We're going to take you through several phases of what to do and what not to do. So let's see how it's done. Here is the rear panel of the 6517B and I thought we'd go over it just to go through the connection so you get that straight. In the upper left hand corner here you'll see the three lug triax input. You'll see the voltage source, banana jacks, high and low. And what we're doing with the scope, we're measuring it with the preamp out, from preamp out to common. With the connections completed, we can now set up the 6517B from the front panel. First thing we want to do is set up the voltage source. Well, we'll just pick, it's very simple, you go to V source, there are three buttons here, operate, up and down arrows. Well, we're going to set it up with one volt. See, you can play around with it. You don't have to hit enter, it'll just stay there. You select the current function. We're going to select 200 picoamp range. Now we can also show resistance, but we'll get to that in a second. And then we would hit operate and release zero check. Okay, so we're going to do that in a second. I wanted to show you how it's connected. What I have here is a one tera ohm resistor. This here is input high. The other side of the resistor is voltage source high. It's a simple series circuit and we have the two lows connected together. Input low and voltage source low. Now you don't have to physically connect those two, you can use the meter connect feature of the instrument shown in another video. Okay, now let's get back to the front panel. All we have to do is hit operate and release zero check. Notice it's all over the place. If you can pan over to the oscilloscope, You can see that's the preamp out. Fairly noisy. Now watch what happens when I just wave my hand in front of the resistor. Look at the front panel display. It's going crazy. That's because it's shielded all the way up to the high, but the resistor, the high impedance point in the circuit is not shielded and it is being driven crazy. With low current you need to have it shielded. Let's go on to the next phase and show you what shielding will do to this. Okay, now we've got a setup here where the resistor is inside a shielded box. Here, let me show you. We just take the top off. This is a one tera ohm resistor right there from high to high and completely shielded. Suspended in the air. Okay, now we'll just put it on and just leave the top off. Take a look at it is a little less noisy. You can wave your hand around a little bit and it goes crazy because I'm going over the top. Look at the scope. The noise is a lot better, a lot less. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is just put, to show you when it's completely shielded, what the difference is. So we'll put the top on. And look at the scope. Hardly anything. I wave my hand over it, hardly any effect. Okay? So shielding plays a big part in low current, high resistance measurements. We can go to resistance if you like. So here it is at the, the correct current range 1.03 tera ohms. And look how solid that is. Very good. Now, a couple other things we'd like to talk about here is this is in default condition, which means the A to D converter is set to one PLC, that's power line cycles. That's the time the A to D converter looks at the input signal. Okay, well we have a control over that, we can make this a little better. So if we went to configure, resistance, speed, 
Go to high accuracy, enter, exit. See how much more stable it is? Now this doesn't have to do with the shielding. Look at the readings here. We're at 1.0324. It's very stable. One other thing we can do to add on to this for stability on these high resistance measurements is a feature that Keithley has called damping. And damping is sort of a filter, but much better. If we were to hit configure R, go to damp, hit enter, we want to turn it on, exit. settling down and it takes a while but look at that stability look at, at the scope hardly any noise at all this is the best way to get these low current high resistance measurements 6517B okay here is another way to do some shielding when you don't have a standard box like we showed in earlier in the video you can just use a standard little aluminum roasting pan or tinfoil pan. You can get it at any grocery store. Do the same thing we did when we were unshielded. We have the resistor, V source high, input high across the resistor, the two lows connected together. I have a little bit of paper that is going to insulate it from the shield. And then let's try and see. Okay. There it is. You can see it's still a little noisy. Look at the scope. That's the preamp out. Look at the display. Wave your hand across it, of course. A little bit noisy. It's shielded, but not quite all the way. So like in the other box, we'll put in uh, the top of the lid here. Yes. And once it settles down, Okay, you can see it settled down here. Look at the noise level here, very low. Put your hand over it. Doesn't affect it much. Now remember, this is just a little rough shield, but just that makes a big difference. So the moral of the story is, when you're doing low current and high resistance measurements, shielding is of the utmost importance. It's still bouncing around a little bit. Let's see if the PLC, the integration rate, makes a difference. So we'll go to configure I, go to high accuracy. You'll notice that it gives you another digit. There we go. You can see it's much more stable. Like before, we can also add damping, which adds another layer. It's that little jump, and then it'll come back. Well, that's about as stable as you get. Okay, now we'll try this on notice that the, what the reading is, 1.5, 1.6. Instead of using paper as the insulator, we'll try Teflon. Okay, let's try that same thing, but we're going to put it in, rest the resistor on a block of Teflon to give it some good insulation from the shield. As you can see, there's less current. What's happening here is we expect more resistance, so we do have less current. Because the resistor is not leaking to the shield through the paper. Look at it's much closer to one picoamp. One volt, one teraohm should be one picoamp. Remember what was it before? That's right, it was 1.5. So it's much better using this. The Teflon is much better insulator. Okay, in summary, 
How do you make proper low current high resistance measurements? There are several factors. One, you have to have an electrometer or ammeter with extreme sensitivity, model 6517B. Use shielding as much as possible. The lower you go in current, the higher in resistance, the more shielding plays a part here. Don't move the cables. If you move the cables, even with low noise triax cables, some amount of current will be generated. It's called triboelectric effect. Use Teflon insulation wherever you can to keep the resistance you're trying to measure isolated. All of the above will help you make proper low current measurements.